This, believe it or not, is not my Steam Deck. This is actually just my regular desktop PC hooked up to my television in the living room to serve as a dedicated gaming PC for the family, running an operating system called Chimera OS. Chimera OS is a gaming-centric Linux distribution that is basically a fork of SteamOS. SteamOS, as you know, is the Linux-based operating system that actually powers the Steam Deck. And Valve talked a couple of years ago about releasing ISOs for SteamOS, uh, but they haven't done that yet. I'm not sure if they're just not happy with the state of SteamOS on other hardware, and maybe they're just focusing on trying to, to improve it and get it to a point they're happy with on their own platform. But because it's open source, other people have taken the source code, made their own modifications and changes and their own tweaks and updates, and one of those groups released it as Chimera OS. Over the last couple of days, I've been giving Chimera OS a trial run on my desktop living room PC, and I'll be honest, I've, I've been pretty happy with it. I had been using Debian Linux uh, to game on on this desktop PC, and before that I was using Windows. Windows is A, proprietary and closed source, uh, and B, it was just a constant bother. There was always a Windows update that was breaking some device driver, or some disk indexer or Windows update service that would kick in in the background and tank performance even though I had set it to game mode and so I basically gave up on running Windows as a gaming platform a couple of years ago and I've been using Debian ever since and Debian's been pretty solid but Debian is a general purpose operating system and I ran into a couple of little issues that were not difficult to fix but they were indicative of the fact that Debian is not released specifically purpose-built for gaming. So there's going to be occasional little things that you have to tweak or change to get the best experience out of it. Uh, one in particular I can remember is that my wife was playing Hogwarts Legacy, and every now and then when she would try to load into a new area, the game would just crash. And it would launch back up just fine, it would run just fine, and she'd play for an hour or so, and then she would try to fast travel, and the game would crash. And what it was, was there is a default limit set to the number of memory reservations a single process can make uh, in Debian that was smaller than what Hogwarts Legacy was trying to do. Five minutes on the internet doing some research, and I figured out what I needed to do, and I fixed it, and it was fine. But my goal with this PC is to have a gaming PC where I have the flexibility to install mods, where I have almost universal backwards compatibility, and where I have the option of doing other things and not being locked into a single ecosystem. But I also want it to be as easy to use as reasonably possible. I don't want my wife and kids to have to come in here and start tweaking and changing settings and things. I would like them to be able to come in, pick up their controller, turn it on, and play some games on the PC. I want to make the PC gaming experience as console-like as reasonably possible. And Valve has put a lot of work towards making that possible, especially with the advent of the Steam Deck. But, as good as SteamOS is, it's only on the Steam Deck. They have not yet released official ISOs of SteamOS. So other people have taken it upon themselves to take their work that's publicly available and to do it themselves. Chimera OS is one of the big results of that. The installation is pretty straightforward, but it is basically like flashing your console. You're not going to get the traditional Linux distribution installer here. You're basically just going to boot from a disk, it's going to ask you what drive you want to install it on, and it's just going to do it. It's, it's sort of like flashing a phone, really. It does not support dual booting. Whatever drive you pick, you will not have the option to partition it, to customize anything about it. It's intended to be a console-like experience. After that's finished, you can boot from that drive and it will boot straight into the Steam Big Picture interface, complete with Valve's Game Scope Display Manager, which is actually one of the things that I was actually looking for. Because even using Steam Big Picture mode on Debian, there were occasional little hiccups, like in certain games, if I pressed the Xbox button on the controller, the Steam overlay would not actually lay on top of the game display. And GameScope is a custom display manager by Valve, and its whole job is to figure out 
what should be displayed on top of what, what image should be scaled up to be full screen or not. And its whole job is gaming centric management of the elements being displayed on your screen. And you don't get that with conventional big picture mode on Windows or a regular Linux distribution. But you do with Steam OS and then by extension Chimera OS. So over the last few days, I've made some notes about some positives of Chimera OS as compared to Steam OS, and I've made some negative notes. So let's go down the list here. First, it uses a newer kernel than regular Steam OS. As of recording, today is August the 1st of 2023, my Steam Deck, which is on the Stable Update channel, is using kernel version 5.13 which is not the latest version of the Linux kernel by far. Even Debian Stable that was just released is actually using version 6.1 and Chimera OS as of recording is using kernel version 6.3. So it's actually a little ahead of Steam OS in terms of what version of the Linux kernel it's using which will also mean that it may actually support some newer hardware or have a little bit better stability or some fixes that SteamOS may not have had backported in just yet. It uses GNOME for the desktop mode instead of KDE so it feels a lot cleaner because there's a lot less going on and it's a lot less cluttered. At least my personal preference I like GNOME better than KDE and it does seem to go into desktop mode a lot faster than the Steam Deck does. That said they did not pin the Steam icon or the return to game mode icon to the taskbar by default and I think that's something they probably should have done so that users wouldn't have to maybe go looking through the menu for the game mode icon to very quickly just go back into game mode. It supports the official Xbox controller wireless dongles out of the box. Normally on regular Linux distributions you have to install the X1 driver which is like a, a community developed open source driver for those dongles. They seem to have added that in out of the box which is awesome because those dongles offer much lower latency than the Bluetooth connection that the Steam Deck uses by default which means especially if you're playing online shooters like Halo or Battlefield or something to that effect you don't want your joysticks feeling like jelly because the latency of the Bluetooth connection. So having the option out of the box to use that without having to go install stuff on top of it after the fact is, is a nice bonus. It comes with a web UI that has all sorts of different options for enabling an FTP server for file uploads, for adding SSH keys so you can remotely log in with SSH. It's got a whole little interface where you can format your storage drives, although it doesn't let you name those drives from that interface. I did have to go into desktop mode and rename the partitions to help me keep track of what was what. Some of the options in the web UI don't seem to work. I tried adding my SSH key and it just it didn't want to take it. It also has options in the web UI to add your Epic Game Store account and other things and then install quote supported games directly from that web UI and then have them appear in your Steam interface. I didn't have any games on my Epic Games account that were listed as supported so I wasn't really able to try that feature out but if you have some games on Epic that you don't have on Steam and they're listed as supported this may be a good option for you. Their website even lists Epic good old games, retro consoles and more. On the retro consoles page they've got a whole little thing where I guess Maybe it comes with a lot of these emulators built in, and then you supply your own game rips. I'm not sure. I didn't try that out very much, but that is something that's listed in the web UI and plastered right on the front page of their website. What I did with my Steam Deck for anything that's not natively from Steam was I just went out to desktop mode. I installed the package called Bottles, which lets you create sort of little containers for Windows applications and I just created a bottle for example battle.net and used that to install Overwatch and just added a shortcut to that as a non-Steam game in Steam and that way within the Steam big picture mode I could just go click on battle.net and launch Overwatch and play Overwatch on my Steam Deck that way. Though I could see how if it works well the web UI might be a little bit simpler for some people to get going with because they literally just go to a little web page click a couple of buttons and sign in and it takes care of the installation and shortcut creation and whatnot for you. Sudo is enabled by default which it's not a big deal to enable it on the Steam Deck but it is enabled by default so when I needed to go rename the partitions 
for my drive so that I could tell them apart within the Steam interface, all I had to do was enter the password gamer and that's the default pseudo password. You should probably change it, but it is enabled by default. I did notice that it has experimental support for HDR and it seems to work. I turned it on, my LG television flickered and said HDR up in the corner and it seems to function, which is a new thing, HDR on Linux. That is not listed even under the developer options of the current stable release of SteamOS. So that's actually another feature that it has that the Steam Deck just straight up doesn't have at all. Since it is running SteamOS, I'm going to guess that these options might be in the pipeline and might be coming to the Steam Deck eventually, but because mine's on the stable channel, maybe I'm a little bit behind. Now here's some not so great things that I've noticed. Number one, it only works with AMD graphics cards. Doesn't affect me. I've got an RX 480, so it worked fine for me. But if you have an NVIDIA or an Intel graphics card, their website specifically calls out that those are not supported. And I don't think that's a choice on their part. I think that that is because Valve is using AMD graphics chips in the development of their display manager and stuff and they don't support NVIDIA or other graphics cards and that may be one reason that Valve hasn't released general purpose ISOs of SteamOS itself. Second, it keeps a lot of the deck specific default settings. For example, all of your games will be locked to 720p until you go in on a game by game basis and change the resolution that is reported to the game to be native or whatever you want it to be. It also keeps a lot of the Steam Deck verbiage around the interface and it's kind of obvious that they're basically just shipping like one of the newer releases of just SteamOS as it comes from the Steam Deck with very little modification which is a good thing because you don't have to worry about some change that they've made breaking something about the system but at the same time if you have a game that is going to make certain changes to its behavior if it thinks you're running on a Steam Deck like download Steam Deck pre-compiled shaders or turn off certain graphics options that they know might seriously hurt performance on the deck. You may run into those things happening on your desktop, even though it may be a lot more powerful than your Steam Deck. But the only thing that I personally encountered was that I had to go in on a game-by-game -game basis and turn up the resolution to just say native so I could run the games at greater than 720p resolution. So anyway, in summary, Chimera OS is a Linux distribution. It is a purpose-built operating system that brings SteamOS to platforms other than the Steam Deck. You can install it on your AMD based desktop gaming PC and turn it into essentially a PC game console where you have the flexibility of the PC in terms of installing mods, going out to desktop mode for more advanced things, almost universal backwards compatibility you can install steam games from 10 or 15 plus years ago if you want to instead of having to rebuy everything every generation as a remaster you can install your own emulators and play your old playstation 1 and 2 game rips if you want to but you can also just treat it like a console where you just come in grab a controller turn the thing on and just play your games on the couch with a controller driven interface that's easy to use instead of having to have like one of those big awkward lap boards with a mouse and keyboard and, th and this that and the other it's it's sort of the best of both worlds which is what i love about the steam deck and the work that valve has been doing on steam os it's my opinion that aside from the few games that don't work because of anti-cheat so for example a big one is fortnite for the games that work, which is quite a lot of them nowadays, Linux has been a far superior gaming experience for me. Even on Debian, which is just a general purpose operating system, I had less headache, there was less garbage running in the background constantly, things didn't break nearly as often, and Windows is just a lot more difficult to modify in any meaningful way. Try uninstalling Cortana or Microsoft Edge the next time you get a chance. So what Valve has done is they have taken Linux, an open and transparent kernel, and they have created their own purpose-built operating system around it, just like lots of other people have done with Ubuntu and Debian and Red Hat and Arch and all of these other distributions. But the work that they have done has benefited the Linux community 
as a whole because they're leaving a lot of their stuff open source. And so even though they're not willing as a corporation to publish an operating system for everybody to install on their PCs, because they're operating in the open, they have left the opportunity there for other people to basically pick the ball up and run with it. And that seems to be exactly what Chimera OS has done. It's a purpose-built, Linux-based gaming operating system. It works great. I've had very minimal issues out of it. So if you want the advantages of SteamOS without having to go buy a Steam Deck, and you, but you've already got a good gaming desktop computer to install it on, definitely give it a shot. This kind of experience is what PC gaming has needed for a very long time. The ability to just sit on your couch 8 or 10 feet from your big television screen with a wireless controller and not just play the games after they've launched, but navigate an, a user-friendly interface and use the machine just with a controller in your hand instead of having to keep a mouse and a keyboard and a controller and other things laying around the couch with you. Valve's work has consoleized the PC experience in all of the right ways, and Chimera OS is bringing that to platforms other than the Steam Deck. So, I hope these guys continue the good work they're doing. I hope that people donate and contribute to them, and I know I'm going to keep it on my living room desktop PC. That computer's entire job is just to play games. I have the apps on my smart TV for things like YouTube or Plex or whatever else. So all I need that computer to be good at is playing my PC games library. And Chimera OS gives it that ability in a user-friendly, controller-driven fashion. And honestly, as good as SteamOS and Chimera OS are getting at being a gaming-centric PC operating system, it's almost to the point where if I thought Chimera OS had some guaranteed funding or were a company or something where they, where I knew they were probably not just going to go away next year if the guys developing it get bored or tired of working on it or something, if I, if I was fairly confident that it was going to stick around long term, that for me would take it out of the realm of being just for hobbyists and into the realm of, hey, my friend wants a gaming PC. He's asked me for some help. I should just install Chimera OS on it and just tell him to just play his games. Because I have not personally had any games in my Steam library that didn't launch or didn't work. I've had more trouble on Windows with older Steam games than I have on Steam OS or Chimera OS. Perfect example, I was talking to my brother the other day on the phone the old school original Max Payne. The last time I tried to run that from Steam on a Windows PC, I had to go digging up community mods to get certain sound files to work. On Steam OS the other day, it just worked. So it's to the point where aside from the initial shock of it just not being Windows and being different, I think even just non-hobbyist just normal people who just want to play their PC games would have a better experience on SteamOS or on Chimera OS. So this is a project that I'm going to keep a very close eye on. I personally am going to be daily driving it on my living room desktop PC. And if you're a fan of the Steam Deck and you have a PC with an AMD graphics card sitting around and it's not doing anything, you might want to check it out. This may be the perfect companion to somebody who has a Steam Deck. You use your Steam Deck in handheld mode when you're on the go, and when you get home, you turn on your Chimera OS-based desktop PC, and you have mostly the same experience at higher resolutions and frame rates. So, if you're a PC gamer, a Linux enthusiast, a Steam Deck owner or enthusiast, or if you're just curious about something different in general, uh, definitely check it out. It may not be for everybody, it may not work as well for you as it did for me, but it's definitely something interesting that I'm going to keep an eye on. So if you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, suggestions, please feel free to post them in the comment section below. And this is Marcus, aka Garowin, out. Happy gaming, y'all. Take care.